Okay, so this is EE 3921, week two, lecture one. Today we're going to wrap up sequential logic. Note that I changed the lab uh, such that lab one is due next week. Uh, today we're going to be doing more machines. We're going to wrap up the example from last time. Uh, in the sense, if you look at the video I posted online on my YouTube channel, towards the end of the video, you will see that the actual FSM synthesized by quarters is different from the FSM that we specified, and we will address that issue. Then we will look at counters, and then we'll look at an example of mealing machine. So today we'll wrap up sequential logic. Next lecture, what I'm going to do is, if we go to the 3921 schedule, I'm basically going to look at model sim and signal tap. So basically, if you go in, you will see that next lecture is on FSM and FSM with data path, but I'll start that like towards the end of next lecture and work on it the last lecture of this week. Next lecture, what I'll do is I'll do model sim and signal tap. And there is information on model sim in your textbook, which you should go through, and I will uh, allude to that next lecture. Okay, so right now, I want you to recall that from last time, this was the Moore machine that we wanted to synthesize. And what I've done is if you go into Quartus, just open this up. I've actually specified it in Quartus. And one of the things I want you to understand from this example is that the synthesizer is synthesizing hardware based on a behavioral HDL spec. So some of the assumptions it makes may not be what you want. So in the sense, if you look at the three-state FSM here, let me take this out. In the sense, uh, let's see. Initially, what I simply had, let me just take this entire thing out. So next state is S1. Basically, when you're in S0, we want to go to S1. And I'm going to say what I just cut so I don't lose it. But anyway, if you synthesize this, so if you do a quick analysis and synthesis, uh, while it's synthesizing, let's just look at the next state logic. It should be very straightforward in the sense that this is our state memory. So as I explained the last lecture, your state memory should simply have the reset state and the synchronous uh, specification. Note that you have to understand what kind of hardware this synthesizes to, and this basically synthesizes to a flip-flop. So if you specify something like this, this won't work because basically the synthesizer cannot figure out what kind of hardware triggers both on the rising edge and not on the rising edge. So if you try to synthesize this, you will most likely get an error which says that can't synthesize registers for this clock edge. So let's look at that error. Can't, couldn't implement a registers for assignments on this clock edge. So basically, you can't have this or anything else for this rising edge uh, keyword because the, basically that this uh, specification gets synthesized to a flip-flop. So now let's look at the RTL viewer. We go in here. One thing is you could look at the state machine viewer directly, but I want to show you where the RTL viewer, it's the same idea that if you go into this, I'm implementing the state machine as a subcomponent, as a component from the top level module. You can see that this is in yellow. So that means there's a state machine in here. And if you go in here, you can see this is not what we specified. From init, you're going to S1 and S0, and there are some conditions. And the reason why this is happening is simply because in VHDL, standard logic does not, which is the type of, which is what inputs is, standard logic vector, it not only includes 0 and 1, but it also includes a bunch of other things, let's say don't cares and undefines. So in other words, you have to be very, very explicit to the synthesizer. That's what I'm going to do. So instead of saying next state is S1, I'm just going to say, Go to S1, even if, I mean, specifically if inputs are 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 
and in the else I say stain is zero but then this is never going to trigger sorry in the sense practically speaking I'm sorry oh, let me do a control is there so practically speaking what's going to happen if we synthesize this as you will see is we get what we want so practically speaking uh, to complete that statement what we're going to get are these triggers so let's see what quarters does and if it's still not what we want we have to obviously go ahead and be even more specific let's just make sure and there it is this is exactly what we wanted right here and you can check that this is true by looking at the conditions here but bottom line is you have to first of all two points okay the two bottom lines number one you have to really check if the hardware you get is the hardware what you specified so you really cannot talk about is it working or not it's working in the sense yeah there are no errors and it's synthesizing but is the hardware what we synthesize is the actually the hardware we specified and if it's not one way to fix and one way to get what we want is to be as specific as possible uh, so that's about it for the more machine stuff <coughs> so let's look at how we specify counters and what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify the counter right here so I'm going to say a simple 3-bit counter I'm just going to show you what it says by so we need clock reset for the counter I'm going to add something else which is basically output logic actually I'm going to pause the lecture because I had a knock on my door all right so continuing uh, let's see so what we're going to implement now is a 3-bit counter so for that let's see I'm going to have like a uh, count out is standard logic vector it's 3 bits 2 down to 0 uh, now I'm, my internal count register is going to be an integer because it intuitively as a human uh, it makes more sense to look at incrementing integers range 0 to 7 so and again recall that this is not all this code if you will is not executing sequentially but you have to think about what hardware this VHDL synthesizes to so in other words this is just another counter like in a sense process so it's a 3 bit count uh, process is process clock reset begin end process 3 bit count process I believe you can do that let's see if it gives an error if reset equals 1 then integer count register is zero note there is no quotes here because it's an integer else and if if uh, rising edge of clock then integer count register is integer count register plus one and if note that I don't have to check if integer count register I mean I don't have to put a check that for the integer count register for wrapping up from 7 to 0 because of two things number one I initialize it properly because of the reset condition second I specified a range here I mean it's a, if you want you can put in a check that if integer count register is 7 make integer count register 0 it's not necessary let's see if I close this end if end if end process and then finally uh, if I want to make a standard logic vector I have to do count out is standard logic vector uh, two unsigned integer count register three bits now something important uh, I have to go to my top level and change uh, the declare the component declaration appropriately so let me go to the top level and here is my component declaration there count out and obviously here I'm, I'm just going to make count out as LEDG 3 down to 1 so just send it to the LEDs and in order to do it let's do a quick analysis synthesis see if I have any errors so what we have is basically a behavioral description of a counter again you can use this as a standard logic let's see uh, interface object of mode out cannot be read count out whoops should be 
carried out let's see if i specified that here i didn't so it assumed default as input so let's try this again so what i was going to say was going in here you can make this a standard logic vector and add and i have a spelling mistake let's fix that but basically uh, you can add standard logic vectors but it makes more sense to add integers so let's see where i made the spelling mistake register goes again And well, let's see what it synthesized to. So here it is, a very simple counter. So we had D flip flop, three bits with the feedback. So it didn't for a state machine because of the way we specified the counter. And uh, that's about it for counters. Now, something important about uh, synchronous design. This is a note, and this is related to your lab one. So as far as synchronous design goes, so let me put that in here. So a note on what is called globally synchronous design Basically, what you want is, let's say you have two modules. So let's call this module one. You basically want one clock for this, clock one. So this is some logic F, if you will. And let's say there is a data bus going to a different module G. And this is at a different clock frequency, clock two and you synchronize between them using a FIFO. But the point is, this one should, all the registers in F and all the registers in G should be clocked by clock one and clock two respectively. Of course, there is always, so this is module one, this is module two. Of course, there's always reset. Okay. Ideally, both of these have the same reset. Okay. So how is this related to lab one? So let me use a separate page. So basically, one potential design for lab one, which is a 24 hour clock, potential design for lab one, you could say, all right, how, what about this? So simply, I have my 50 megahertz clock coming in from the board, so the 50 megahertz board clock. You could step it down, so here is a, step down counter you could step it down to one hertz so this is one hertz okay so this is the seconds counter so this is one seconds counter module so let's call this f module g and then from here you could overflow the minutes counter. In other words, the frequency of this, uh, GH, so here is the minutes counter, is 1 over 60 hertz. And then from here, you obviously go into the hours counter. So K, if you will, module K. So this is one over 3600 hertz, so hours counter, and you reset appropriately. But the bottom line is this design is not recommended. So it's not recommended since we have multiple clock frequencies multiple clock frequencies and it's actually globally asynchronous because of it although it's locally synchronous and timing closure becomes difficult okay again this is not an issue when you're talking about design functionality for such a simple 24-hour clock the design will quote-unquote work uh, on your FPGA, but then let's say you have a practical design, which is what this class is about. It's about digital system design, practical industrial design, or let's say you're doing a senior design using FPGAs. This 
is not recommended. So time enclosure becomes problematic. So a better design, and Chu talks about this in his book, and it's in your readings. So here is a better design. And this is what we will do for lab one, is first of all, you have the 50 megahertz clock coming in, board clock and basically this so here is the seconds counter here is the minutes counter so here is a 50 megahertz board clock they're all clocked by this one clock Actually, erase it here. It's here, and here is the hours counter. And of course, you have a global reset. So, reset, reset, reset. So, what we will do is we'll have an enable pulse. So, here is an enable pulse that will enable the subsequent counter. So here is enable. And then, here is another enable pulse. So this enable pulse will be three instances of a single clock cycle pulse generator state machine. And that's the one we're going to design as a melee machine shortly. But for now, here is enable pulse. And then here is, this is basically when it overflows, you want an hours reset. So hours reset. So here is hours reset signal. And this reset is simply an OR of your global reset, which is key zero, or hours reset, same thing here. So here is key zero, here's hours reset. key zero and ours reset and notice that this design is globally synchronous there is only one clock coming in this is how you want to do all designs from now and obviously you have the seconds count from here going into your uh, seven sec display So does your minutes count. And on the DE1, you only have four seven segment displays. So what you could do is you could send the hours count to LEDs. So here is seven seg decoder. Okay, so decoder, this doesn't go directly to the display. This goes to the decoder. And then this one is very simple, like you can just make it go to LEDs, okay, LED, so this is hours count. But, and hopefully you designed these decoders last week, it should be very straightforward. But the bottom line is, you should look at globally synchronous designs. Now, let's take a break, and then in the last one third of the lecture, we will design this melee machine, single pulse melee machine. So I'm gonna take a break, and I'll be back shortly. Okay, so continuing, we're gonna design a single pulse generator, so melee machine. You can also do this as a more machine, but I'm gonna do this as a melee machine just for uh, like showing you an example of a melee machine, single pulse generator. So the idea is you have an input, which is binary, 
you obviously have a clock so this is one bit and of course you always have the reset and the pulse out is going to be a single clock cycle pulse so it's going to be high for only one clock cycle so this is one clock cycle long and the idea is here is the finite state machine so we have an input zero state and then we're going to have an input one state so there are only two transition arcs out of every state because the input is binary it's zero or one now so here it is in equals something pulse equals zero or one in equals zero or one pulse equals zero or one same thing here okay so obviously when the input is zero the pulse stays at zero however when the input becomes one the pulse becomes one and that's it in the sense that the pulse everywhere else is zero the pulse output because and this is the if you could say the um, difficulty which students face when they first see this the difficulty is the clock cycles are implicit in these transitions because there's a synchronous state machine so this transition basically takes one clock cycle and that's when the pulse should be high point number one point number two is you want this in to be equal to one in the sense the state basically tells you what the input is so you have the input as one you generate a pulse stay here because as long as the input is one and when the input becomes zero you go back to the input zero state this is a common interview question that is asked and this single pulse generator is also useful for example when you it's a very useful practical circuit uh, when we cross crosswalks when somebody pressure presses ah, presses the green pedestrian button in the US even if you keep holding the button it doesn't help because what comes out is a single pulse the first time you press it okay that's about it for this lecture next lecture what we will do is we'll realize the single pulse generator in we'll specify the single pulse generator in VHDL we'll look at a model sim simulation and uh, an in system and we'll also use signal tap for in system debugging all right see you then